Hey guys, welcome to the Fast Lane Truck. Today we are talking about how your truck is rated to tow, what it can tow. Ram flew myself and a videographer out here to the Chelsea Proving Grounds to show us exactly how they test and rate their trucks. And they provided this, a brand new Ram 3500 Mega Cab. And today we are talking about four funny numbers, 2807. Now here's the issue. If you go back just 10 years, for example, every manufacturer had a different rating scale on how they would rate their trucks for towing. And it was all kind of a bit of a mess. People wanted consistency. So the manufacturers came together and said, look, let's all get into a room and we'll decide on a set of standards that we'll all follow, a trailer standard we can all follow, and a bunch of tests. A few years back now, all of the OEs got together, we brought in some of the trailer manufacturers in an attempt to standardize the assessment process for trailer tow. The competitive aspects of who can tow what is very important and it's a key attribute to the vehicle. With that standard, all of the OEs sat down, formed a committee, and established the criteria um, to, to, I guess, not. it's not a certification. It's basically, it's a guideline to say, hey, if my trailer, max trailer number is this, there's a credible means of, of validation behind it that's not subjective. So today in the fast lane truck, we've got an exclusive behind the scenes that'll show you just how not only Ram, but all these manufacturers are rating their truck along this SAE J2807 scale. Of course, this truck has already met its 2807 testing because it's for sale, but we wanted to come out here and see exactly how these tests are performed. And we partnered with Engineering Explained to get all the data. He has a V-Box mounted on the roof. It's a GPS performance tracker. He's gonna go in depth about the numbers, but to show you exactly what these tests look like, we're gonna show you first person how Ram does their testing. Up first is probably the most fun test. It's of course acceleration, zero to 30, and zero to 60, but of course there are standards. Zero to 30, we're looking for 14 seconds or less. Okay, how about zero to 60? Zero to 60, we're looking for 35 seconds or less. What's the plan here? How do you do it? So essentially, we've got our vehicle loaded up and we're just gonna give it a brake torque start obviously at zero right and launch it off the line keep full wide open throttle acceleration till we hit 60. we've got our data recording and we'll analyze that data and make sure we hit our specs all right let's see what happens okay. loading it up More away. wow listen to that comments that's pretty good that is pretty awesome so you can really feel the weight behind us this is no miata but hopefully we'll still hit 60 within the time Five seconds. Yeah, wait, what? 28 seconds. Yes. 28 seconds? Wow. And that's based on science, too. That's not just me with a stopwatch. <laughs> 28 yeah, seconds on GPS. 20 hertz GPS, so it's pretty good. Pretty good. Is yeah. 20 hertz better than my finger? Yeah, it's way better than your finger. Right? <laughs> okay, so we're going to do the 40 to 60 run. So, is this all based on speedometer? Yep. Well, we've got our V box recording data as well. Cool. So, we'll line up with both. And we'll get ready to go right when we're at 40. And the target is 21 seconds. And there's no manual mode, there's nothing that you play with on the shifting, it's just... We want this to be exactly as a customer would operate the vehicle. That's that's the, the goal here. So this is a 6.7 liter Cummins turbo diesel in this Ram 3500 mega cab. This is the engine that develops over a thousand, well, 1,000 pound-feet of torque to be exact. And Ram says that this truck is bone stock exactly as you'd buy it from your dealer. All right, next up, it's all about stressing the heck out of this truck. We are going up a 15% grade. We're gonna stop in the middle and accelerate to see if this truck can tow 
30,000 pounds up a 15% grade from a complete stop. Now technically the test is 12, but we don't have a 12% grade here, so we're using 15. What we're looking for on that is the ability to accelerate uh, 15 feet five times within five minutes. So again, that's the ability to launch, let's say you're on a grade stop and go traffic from a customer standpoint perhaps, um, so that you can launch without turning on lights, you can successfully be able to actually move the truck and to be able to do it multiple times. And there's also a park brake test to make sure you can hold the weight that you're advertising on a 12% grade. If you could see the amount of security and personnel that have surrounded us during this test, you'd think that we're doing something with like the CIA. We've got people blocking off the road over there at the top, so this was a big haul. This is a really special look at how SDA developed. So 15% grade, let's see if the parking brake can hold and let's see if we can accelerate up. Okay, so we're in a maxed out truck up a 15% grade, and we're asking those rear brakes to hold the entire load. Yep, whole thing. All right, let's see if it'll do it. I, it probably doesn't look like much on camera, but it seriously looks like you're you're looking up a small ski mountain. Is, is kind of what it looks like. All you see is sky. Yeah, all you see is sky here. And it's one thing if you see sky in a Jeep in Moab, it's another if you're 40,000 pounds. Okay, so here we are. So what's the procedure? Yep, so we got our brakes on, throw it into neutral there, and set our parking brake down. Right off. Wow, so hold. just like that, so yep. we're in neutral. neutral. So this entire truck and trailer is being held by what? The rear brakes? Rear, par rear parking brake, yep. Wow. Yep. It's amazing. Yep. So now the scary part though is we've got a lot of weights on an extremely steep hill. Mm-hmm. How are we getting off of this? So we're just gonna go forward. Forward, we're going up. We're gonna go up. Up the hill. Just like our uh, zero to 60 tests, we'll load up the, the brakes a little bit here, and then we'll just drive right up the hill. All right. So you can really hear that coming to come to life in the turbo spool. But, whoa, is that the rear end a little? A little hot. Is your foot all the way down? Nope. Really? So you've got yeah. some in reserve there. Maybe 30%. And we're almost there. Wow. There's 10 miles an hour up a 15% grade. Keep in mind our eye gauntlet at home is only about seven. You know, and that's the highway, but the 15 is, is getting up there. Wow, look at that, and it just shifted. Yep. That was a pass. Yep, that was a pass. All right, so now we have to do the same thing going down, huh? We're essentially going to just test spark brake again, going downwards. There you go. So we're, we're back down on the 15%. Back down on the 15% grade. Whoa. Yeah, so let's go down. And there we are. Well, that's it. Yep. So it's another pass. Yep. Another wow. pass. This is your job, huh? You get to do fun stuff like this yeah. every day. Yep. Here we are. We're rolling on out. Now I know in the video it's going to look like we drove up a driveway, but I promise you it's 15% it's, it's grade is, is steep. This is exactly the kind of trailer they would be using if they were actually testing this truck for real, which they already have, and it weighs in according to them at 30,645 pounds. Now the cool thing is there's actually a trailer standard. Let me let Rod take you through that. Within the standard, the committee also developed a set of what we call exemplar trailers. So, and these go all the way down from single axle box trailers that are, you know, like four by six in size, depending if it's pass car, all the way up to the, the large trailer you see behind me. But we basically went through and established those trailer criteria so that again, all the OEs are utilizing, utilizing the same trailers. So it, the frontal area is defined, the length of the trailer is defined, the distance, the length of the hitch, the length of the hitch from the hitch to the axles, the size tire, the brand of tire on the axle, all of that's defined in the standard. So again, it's all apples to apples. So there are two J2807 braking tests. 20 to zero with a trailer that has brakes and 20 to zero with a trailer that has brakes that maybe have failed completely. 20 to zero mm -hmm. um, without trailer brakes. Yep. How many feet? 80 feet or and less. Then, and then two, okay, or less. <laughs> yeah. or, or 20 to zero with trailer brakes. Yep, that's 45 feet. We do testing beyond this envelope. We've got, you know, you may say 20 to zero seems a little slow. We don't just check at 20 to zero, but that's what the standard was agreed upon to the 
panel people who made it, obviously. Is there a standard on what you set the trailer gain to for the brakes? Uh, no, you can go full. You can full go gain. full, yeah. So I assume most people will go full. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> when you say brake, this is going to be like a panic stop. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yep. So 20. Bigger point to stop. Whoa! <laughs> it was very short. Yep. <laughs> so we'll just go all the way down. We've got no fin. In terms of brakes for the trailer, and we're just doing all vehicle brakes. Wow. Yep. That's wild. So this simulates um, uh, a failure of the brakes then? Yeah, failure of the trailer brakes. We want to make sure the vehicle's still controlled, uh, you know, stopping. We don't have any major loss of our, our lane um, on the highway or anything like that. That's what we're simulating here. And just want to make sure we get to a nice controlled stop, even without the trailer brakes. And so you could note a difference in stopping distance, but we remain controlled, nice straight. We didn't have any sway or anything like that. And that's what we want to see from this test. All right, so this truck goes, it stops. And actually, go over to Engineering Explain if you want the exact data. But he was telling me that with the brakes, the truck stopped in about six meters without the brakes. It took about 15 meters. So go over to that channel for all the details. But we know it goes, we know it stops. Let's see if it'll turn. For the handling standpoint, there are two key assessments that we, we analyze per the specification. One is the understeer portion, which is what we're standing on, our 300 foot circle. And the other is the sway performance test. The understeer portion simulates a, a situation, let's say like an exit ramp or a cloverleaf, where you have vehicle speed and you want to ensure that it, the, the truck always maintains a level of understeer and keeps you in a very predictable situation. We, we run it over a broad range of speed, but very specifically between 0.1G and 0.3G. We analyze the understeer to ensure that it always is an understeer, it is not neutral steer or oversteer. So it looks like we've got basically a bunch of white circles, correct? And we're just going to be trying to hold the circle? Correct, yeah. So we will, we will put our tire on the, uh, the appropriate circle per the specification, the 300 foot circle and we will keep our tire on that as we slowly accelerate. We'll see that Isaac has to keep adding steering wheel angle to keep the car on the line. So what you're saying here is you actually want the vehicle to understeer? Correct, yes. Oh, wild, okay. The sway portion of the test simulates a, call it a, a moderate lane change event or a, a, an avoidance situation where something were to pop up in front of you. So it's run at 100 kilometers an hour. We input a very specific pulse into the steering wheel. And what we look to make sure is that the trailer motion is a damped motion that goes back to basically zero and doesn't get out of control. So 2807 from a dynamic standpoint is much more of a, I, I, it is a sub-limit handling assessment. So everything is in the linear range of operation. This is measuring for kind of the oscillation of the trailer, correct? C correct, yeah. So what, what, we, what we monitor here is the, the angle between the truck and the trailer. And what we look for is that the, the motion is, is brought back to zero relative in an appropriate amount of uh, time. So we're going to come along this bank and then once we get to the yellow cone on the other side, we're going to accelerate up to 100 kilometers per hour, about 62 miles an hour. And then we're going to make the maneuver and hopefully on the camera you can kind of see what it looks like on the outside. 80, 85, 90 kilometers an hour, of course. So it's a brief movement. It's a very brief movement, and what we what we should have noticed there was again, you can feel the trailer gets a misalignment to the truck, but very quickly gets brought back into line. A 
Of course, there is the hardest test that we're not actually showcasing today. That's the Davis Dam test. So the manufacturers go out to the steep grade out in the middle of Arizona when it's 110 degrees and they make sure that their truck towing a trailer can go up that grade and not overheat, not throw a check engine light. It's really exciting stuff, but of course it's September and we aren't able to get out there. But a big thank you to Ram for giving us a look behind the scenes at how they test their trucks. And actually, because it's a standard, how Toyota, how Ford, how Chevy, how every OE tests their truck along J2807. This has been a really amazing first look. As always, this is Tommy with the Fastlane Truck. Go back to tfltruck.com for more news, views, and real world reviews.